Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Ino. Part 1. Huge shout out to Maverick9871 for this story. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. The 25 year old Naruto was sitting by a campfire looking at the flames thinking about the past. Ino walked up beside him and took his hand as she sat down and said so it's finally over. Naruto sighed and said yes, but was it worth it? Ino said you better than anyone knows that answer. Kanaha and Suna are destroyed. All of our friends are dead. And the cause of it all has finally been stopped. Naruto looked at her and said at least I still have you. Ino leaned forward and kissed him softly on the lips. After they broke apart Naruto sighed and said at least we stopped Akatsuki from getting all of the tail demons. Ino said sadly yeah, they got all of them, but QB. QB who was listening to them said actually they did not get all of them but me. Naruto looked confused and Ino asked what's wrong. Naruto said QB just said that they did not get all of them beside him. Ino said, but I thought that you were the last on free. QB said the two tail cat they trapped was actually not Nibi, but her sister Sibi. Naruto said so what do you mean Fox? QB said simple kid, I am telling you that the two tail that they caught was not Nibi, and because of this, I think I can make a deal with you. Naruto said what does that have to do with anything and what do you have that I would want anyways? Ino tapped Naruto on the shoulder to get his attention and said what's QB saying. Naruto said QB is not making any sense, he said the two tail cat they caught was actually Nibi sister CB, and he has some kind of deal. Ino getting tired of being a loose wheel in the conversation, used her shintention no jutsu on Naruto and entered his mind. She walked up to where the QB was held and saw Naruto standing there. Ino said what kind of deal. QB getting tired of being ignored, said the kind of damn deal that let you save you stupid friends and that damn village before he started panting. After he calmed down he said, the reason I know Nibi is still alive because I put her in a special dimension after she nearly died from an attack by Hachibi the eight-headed snake. I was her mate and he attacked her to get to me. Ino said so what is this deal that you are talking about? QB sat still for a moment looking at Ino and said, what would you be willing to do to save your friends and village? Before Ino could say anything QB said would you still be with the kid here, even if all of your friends and possibly your parents left you and the villagers hated you? Ino said yeah, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. Naruto said QB I don't know what is going on here, but I don't like where this is going. QB said same for you kid, would you really be willing to become what all those idiots in that village called you? Naruto said you mean a demon. I don't understand. QB said to make it simple. I will die when you die. Period. We already know this. What you don't know is that my mate will be forever trapped in the dimension I put her in forever asleep. I don't want that for her, so I am willing to make a deal with you both. I am willing to send you back to the day you became Genin. However you will have all of your memories and knowledge, but your strength is a different story. Your bodies will change and you will change and become stronger. To do this you both will have to become demons and merge with the one you are replacing. For you kid you will be the new QB I will cease to exist. For Eno she will become the new Nibi as she will cease to exist. Me and her will die and be together in the afterlife. You two will live on forever or until you are killed or do what I am proposing. Naruto said if we become demon, the people of our village will run us out before we even have a chance to explain. QB said no they won't. You see when we merge you will get all of our memories and all demons know how to change fire looks, so you both will know how to shapeshift to keep people from seeing. And the best part is until you actually release it, people will see what you wanted to see. Ino said is there any drawbacks beside becoming an actual demon that we should know about? QB said besides you both becoming the summon bosses of foxes and cats, not really. The kid will be the boss of all demons, so he will have to deal with a few problems with them. You both will have a mating season though. Ino blushed and said what's that supposed to mean, exactly. QB laughed and said it's simple actually. Once a year you will enter a time where you are in heat and is the only time you can actually become with a litter of kits. During this time Naruto will be able to tell by the pheromones you release and become aroused. However you have final say at that time, but it will be hard to resist for either of you. Naruto said will the kids be human or demon? QB said it would be a demon, but its appearance will be human. It won't start getting its demon's looks until it reached puberty, in which time you have to teach it the shapeshifting skills. Naruto sighed and said, can you give us a little time to talk before we make a decision in private? QB said sure kid I will give you an hour while I get everything ready. Ino released her jutsu, and they both came out of fire dazes. Naruto said so what do you think? Ino said well, I think we should look at pros versus cons. We can go back in time and change stuff to save our village and friends. Naruto said I know I will be hated, but if you are around me or they find out the truth you might be. 
Ino said we can stop sound and Akatsuki. Naruto said Ino are you sure about this, I mean, I know we have been together for almost a year now, but, you remember what life was like back then. You were a fangirl and I was a loud idiot. Ino said Naruto, I am that I was a fangirl and treated everyone bad back then, hell I lost my best friend over it, but now that I got to know the real you and not the idiot who hid behind a mask I say I could live all my life happily by your side. Naruto gave her a hug a passionate kiss. After they broke apart Naruto said Ino, I know this is stupid, but I want to do this before the changes. Ino would you when we get old enough age and marry me. Ino squealed and tackled Naruto and said I would love to Naruto. As she kissed him and they rolled around on the ground for a few minutes. After they broke apart from kissing Naruto said I think we should go see the fox and say our goodbye. Ino performed her jutsu agent and came in front of the cage of QB and said okay fox, we got a deal what do we do. QB said I just need for you and the kid here to cut both of your hands and let the blood between you mix as you hold hands. I will channel the chakra into both of you and have Nibba's spirit merge with yours kitten. It will be painful, but you must keep holding hands until you pass out. When you wake up you both will be in your new demon bodies on the day you became genins. Remember this. You won't be able to go back again so make sure you like what changes you make and have a happy life. Ino released the jutsu and then she pulled out a kunia and cut both of her hands. Naruto did the same, but this time QB did not start healing it. They put fire hands together with the fingers intertwined and red and yellow chakra mixed with blue started forming around the hands. Ino was the first to start screaming but continued to hold on. A moment later Naruto also started screaming as the pain hit him also. They screamed until they could not breath any longer and passed out still holding hands. Naruto woke on a somewhat soft mattress. He looked around his surroundings and found himself in his old apartment. He had not lived here since Kanaha was destroyed seven years ago. Naruto sighed and tried to enter his mind. As he did he found the cage where QB once was empty. Naruto left his mind and got out of bed. He noticed that he was shorter than he used to be, but not as short as he was as a kid. He now was 5'9". When he was a kid he was 5'3 and was shorter than everyone else. As he got older he became 6'2". He also noticed that all of his baby fat was gone and lean muscles were in its place. Naruto went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. He could see his fangs were a little longer with his nails also becoming sharper, his hair had red tips in the end of it, and he had tails way to minute tails 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 tails. Naruto sighed and started his normal morning activities. After taking a shower he stood in front of the mirror and after a minute he had a memory of how to shapeshift enter his mind and quickly did it. His tails disappeared. His nails and fangs retracted but he kept the red tips on his hair. He also noticed his eyes were slitted and he had a tattoo of a ring on his left ring finger. Deciding to leave them he went to his room and looked for something to wear. After finding that he only had his orange jumpsuit he put it on and was about to leave when an idea popped in his head. He quickly ran to the bathroom and tried to change his cloths like he did his body. They quickly changed from his orange jumpsuit to a black shirt and black ninja pants with his spiral on the back in red. Naruto only had one thought when he saw the change. Cool. Naruto left his apartment after locking it and started his way toward the school. He saw people staring at him, but he ignored it, just glad everyone was still alive. He thought about going to see Ino and make sure she was okay, but did not want to cause a problem with her parents yet. He quickly made it to school. As he got there he noticed what would become the rookie nine. Shikamaru said what are you doing here Naruto, this is only for people who passed. Naruto said I know look at the head and figure a genius. As he walked to the back of the class and sat down away from everyone. As Naruto sat down Akamaru started barking and Kiba said what are you talking about. Akamaru barked some more, and Kiba started sniffing the air and said you're right. He does smell like a fox, even more than usual and wats up with him being taller. Naruto sighed and said it's called puberty dog boy and as for me smelling like foxes, I guess I have a natural scent of it. Kiba started to say something when two girls came barreling through the door. Sakura said I win Ino, Sasuke is mine. Naruto looked down and hit his head against his desk. So she did not make it, I guess it was all for nothing, and I am all alone agent. Sigh. Ino said is that why you tried to catch me this morning? I thought you just wanted to race. As she walked into the classroom and up the stairs. Sakura thought she was trying to get Sasuke and jumped in the seat by him like an idiot because Ino just kept walking right on by. Everyone was thinking what's going on. Naruto looked up as Ino said that to Sakura and began hoping and as she drew nearer he held his breath. Ino stopped in front of Naruto and smiled and said Nibi said hello. Naruto stood up and gave Ino a hug as he swung her around in a circle. Finally setting her back down she smiled and said I take it you remember as she waved her left hand in front of her face. Naruto smiled and said yeah. Before slipping back on his face of an idiot. 
Bino saw him do it and said no mask as she grabbed him and pulled him into a passionate kiss as he wrapped his arms around her back and hers around his neck. Silence except for the sound of purring somewhere in the room. The entire room was sweat dropping at the scene. Hinata fainted. Even poor, poor, Hiruka who walked in was sweat dropping. Finally they broke apart and Sakura stormed up to the top of the class and said what the hell are you doing Ino pig. Ino looked at her and said cad actually but mind your own business, go deal with the bastard. Sakura started to say something, but an Abnu appeared in a dragon mask and said sorry to interrupt, but the Hokage has decided he needs to change the team setup and would like the list. Also he would like to see Naruto and Ino about some prank he pulled. Naruto and Ino both stepped toward him as Aruka handed the Abnu the, the team lists. As the Abnu put his hands on both of them they disappeared in a swirl of leaves. The three appeared in the Hokage's office, and Naruto said, thanks for the lift Yamato. The Hokage and the Abnu both stiffened at the name Naruto said, and the Abnu said, why did you call me that? Naruto said simple as I am sure the three in a game jutsu over in the corner of the room are wondering as well. You are the only survivor of Orochimaru test which he implanted the Shodium Hokage Dna into, and you have the ability to restrain demons and the element of wood. The third said Naruto, how do you know this? Naruto sighed and said it's a long story, and I am sure Kakashi, Asuma and Kurenai are all going to get tired by the end of it, so we might as well get comfortable. The Gain Jutsu in the corner dropped, and all three of them stepped forward, and the third said okay Naruto. Why don't you start and why do I get the feeling Ino is involved somehow? Ino said because you are right. Naruto you take too long to explain so I will just give them the rundown. Basically Naruto and I made a deal after a bunch of shit happened and we were sent back to today to try and change what is going to happen. The third said that is an interesting idea, but I don't suppose you have any proof. Naruto said I got proof, but you have to agree what you see or hear does not leave this office, especially the council. The third said I don't see a problem with that. Naruto said the price for us making this deal is simple. Ino drop it. As he dropped his shapeshift and suddenly the fangs in his mouth grew, his nails became longer and nine tails shot out of his back. Ino was almost the same, but instead on nine tails she had two. Everyone in the room tensed but after a few minutes the third said what exactly just happened and how come Ino change, I can understand you Naruto but not her. Naruto said basically what happened is the leaf was destroyed. Ino and I were probably the last two leaf to live. Tsunade Bachin, Iro Sanin, Mom, Shino, Kiba, Sakura, Hinata, Niji, Lee, Tenten, Inari, Rin, Gera, Tamari, Kankuro, Tazana, Tsunami, Brianna, all died along with all of you over the next 13 years. The third said Naruto, I'm curious, why did you not add Sasuke into the list you said died? Ino said as she had her tail playing with Naruto's that bastard should be killed for what he done. It's his fault most of our friends died, him, that snake freak in Akatsuki. Naruto said Ino calm down please. Ino sighed and crossed her arms, and Naruto said so what do you want no. The third said so you mind telling me why you both look like that. Naruto said basically the only way for us to do this and get a second chance was for QB and Nibi to die and in the process be replaced. I don't know all the details except the QB that attacked the leaf is now dead. I am the new QB QBS mate Nibi, who is not the same one in our dimension is dead, and Ino is the new Nibi. Bakashi said Naruto, why would you do that and what happened to the QB from now? Naruto said call it family tradition, putting the needs of others before our own. As for the QB from now, gone the seal is empty. Everyone looked at him weird except the third, and he said so I take it you know who your dad was then. Naruto said yeah, mom told me who he was, who both my grandparents are, and why they are not here right now before she died. If you were not dead I would have decked you at that moment old man, but you died by pulling the same stunt dad did, except it was agents the snake bastard and was in vain. Bakashi said Naruto, if you don't mind me asking, who are your parents? Naruto sighed and looked at the third, and the third said it's your choice. Naruto said I am the son of Arashi Kazama and Shizune Kazama, my grandparents are Tsunade and Jiraiya. Basically I am the descendant of the Shodium, Nidame, Yodium, and God I am Hokage. Bakashi looked at the third and said you told me he died during the attack. How could you not tell me I am his godfather? Bakashi was interrupted by Naruto and said relax Kakashi sensei, he told mom and and both my grandparents the same thing. They only found out after I had to have major surgery after three chitaris hit me and they needed a blood donor. Bakashi stopped and asked who hit you with a chidori and why. Naruto sighed and said, I have been hit with that damn jutsu more times than I can count thanks to the bastard Sasuke before and after the snake took over. Yamato said Naruto, I got a question if you don't mind. Are you both half or full now? Naruto said full, that was the price. The third said I am curious about something Naruto. You said you are a descendant of the Gondai Hokage. Who is that going to be? 
Naruto said Tsunade will become the Gondaime after I convince her to change her opinion of Kanaha. The third said how did you convince her, I have been trying for a few years now. Naruto said well after you died, me and Hirosanen went to look for her and I have the opposite luck of her. I completed the first two steps in three weeks and mastered the third step of Rasengan in a week, which caused me to win a bet. Bakashi said you know the Rasengan. Can I see it? Naruto said can it wait until we are in the open because I don't know how well this new body's control is yet, so I don't want to blow up this office. Bakashi nodded. The third sighed and said so what do you both have planned? Ino said we know about the major stuff that is going to happen, the war, Sasuke defection, Akatsuki. Asuma said several times now you have mentioned Akatsuki, who are they? Naruto sighed as he rubbed his eyes and said the worst enemy you could ever face. Between Suna and us we lost two-thirds of our villages to those bastards before we stopped them. The cost was too much. They failed to get the last piece they needed to win. Me. Gurunai said what is it they wanted with you and why could they not get it if they were so tough? Ino said Naruto went from Genin to Sanin level before they could capture him and take QB from him, like they did the other eight-tailed beast, including Nibi sister CB, who is in a vessel now. The third said what are they planning on doing with them Naruto? Naruto said originally they wanted to release a ten-tailed demon that was sealed by the other nine ages ago. After the timeline passed and they could not take QB they started using the demons as puppets and used them to attack different villages. They each were sealed into a ring that each of the members carried. Bakashi asked do you know who they are? Naruto looked at Ino and Ino said Itachi Ichiha of the Leaf, Kisum Hashigaki of the Mist, Dadara of the Rock, Zetsu of the Grass, Hayden of the Rain, Kakuzu of the Waterfall, Tobi, Sasori of the Red Sand of Suna, Orochimaru was once a member and still has his ring, the leader, and also some other guy we never got any data on. Asuma dropped his cigarette as Yamato said, you just named of most of the top 20 people in the bingo book. Naruto said I know and they are all pain in the asses, anyways what are you planning now old man? Don't forget that you still got the rest of the rookie nine waiting in class for team placements. The third sighed and said I am going to have to talk to you both later, but for now I think I should change the lineup. Any preference? Naruto said only request I have is let me still be with Sasuke. That way when the snake bastard comes I can try and kill him and maybe stop the war. Ino said if you are doing request. I would like to be put on Naruto team also, only for the fact that Choji until the retrieval mission only eats and Shikamaru who became a chunin, took being a ninja serious after almost almost losing everyone on the retrieval mission and took up smoking after Sensei died left his unborn child. Looking at Kurinai and Asuma with a smirk. The third said I agree Naruto has to be with Sasuke, but I don't want to change teams since it means more paperwork and also might change too much. Naruto started changing back into his new human form and Ino did the same. The third said I guess you should head back to class and keep everything a secret as best as you can. Yamato please take them back and if anyone asks tell them they wanted to know if we knew anything about the flowers with paint bums that hit the Hokage's office. Yamato placed his hands on both and all three disappeared. The third looked at the three who were still in his office and said what do you think? Gurunai still blushing from the baby crack said I think they were telling the truth. The third said so do I, I just don't know what to do about it. They did not seem to want to tell too much about the future, they mentioned a war, but never said when or with who. They mentioned about Sasuke and Orochimaru, but not what, and they mentioned about all of us dying and the leaf being destroyed, but not when or where. Bakashi said I just wonder if both of them realize what they put themselves in for. How do you think Ino's parents are going to react? The third said I want a little more detail from them so I have a plan. I want you to bring both them here after team meeting and I will have Inoich here also. That is all dismissed. Naruto and Ino both appeared with the avenue as the class was all sitting and talking, but stopped when they got there. Naruto said man I can't believe they thought it was me and you who pulled that prank in the Hokage's office. Ino said I know. Just because someone delivered flowers to his office and put paint bums in it, they think that it was you, and since my family is the only flower shop in town I had to be involved. Imado handed the list back to Aruka trying not to laugh and left before he did. Aruka sighed and said okay class sorry about the wait. Team 1 is Team 7 is Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke. Sakura started cheering while Naruto looked back to Ino and smiled a sad smile. Aruka sighed and said Team 8 is Kiba, Shino, and Hinata. Team 9 is still in service, so Team 10 is Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru. Your instructors should be here shortly. And with that he left. Naruto got up and sat down on the window seal. Ino got up and headed over to Naruto only to be stopped by Sakura, who said so Ino, you and the idiot a couple now. I guess my charm has finally proven that Sasuke is mine. Ino looked at Sakura and said Sakura, we're not kids anymore. Grow up and open your eyes. The world does not evolve around Sasuke and is for Naruto. If you have not figured it out I am not telling you. 
And with that she walked to Naruto and sat with her back against his chest as they both looked out the window and the mysterious purring sound started aging. Naruto chuckled a little and said in a whisper, if I did not know better I swear that with the purring you are doing you were happy. Ino smiled and said I am. Naruto said well at least this cat is better than Tora. Ino looked at him and said now that is a true demon cat there. Biba said man what is going on today. First Naruto looks different and smells of foxes. Now Ino looks a little different and smells of cats. Sakura could not believe what she was hearing. Sasuke smirked at this and walked over to Naruto and said hey Ino, why are you hanging out with a dope when you could walk home with me today? Ino looked from the window at Sasuke and said why would I want that? You got nothing to offer me. Sasuke became pissed and draw his arm back to punch Ino, but his punch was stoked by Naruto's hand and he said Sasuke, sometimes I can't figure you out. You can have almost any woman you want, but when one decides she does not want you, you become jealous and decide to try and take the person away from who she is with. I know your clan was nothing but jutsu thieves but come on. Do you really have to be a woman stealer also? Sasuke became enraged and said what do you know idiot about my clan? Naruto sighed and said beside the fact that you have a bloodline that steal most jutsu, was once the police for of the city, killed by your brother Itachi, with the final level of the Sharingan, after he killed his best friend and made you watch it over and over agent, with the gained jutsu from the Sharingan, almost nothing. Sasuke tried to kick Naruto who was still sitting up against him when Naruto used replacement on both of them, and Sasuke hit a desk that was in fireplace now. Suddenly the door opened to the class and Asuma and Kurinai came in. Team 10 and 8 come with us Kurinai said. Ino started moving to the door, but Naruto grabbed her hand and said meet me at the memorial stone later. Ino nodded before leaving. Sasuke hated to admit it, but he hurt his leg on the desk he kicked, so he sat down and acted like the pretty bastard he is. Sakura sat down next to him, and Naruto decided to get some training done to test his body. He walked to the wall in front of the class and put his hands in the ram sign before starting to climb the wall. Once he made it up the wall he went to the ceiling and started walking upside down on it. Sakura was amazed, and Sasuke was pissed because he did not know how to do it. Sakura wanted to try it, but did not want to ruin the moment she had with Sasuke. An hour later Sasuke and Sakura were still sitting, and Naruto was doing push-ups on the ceiling. Sakura finally got bored and said so Naruto, how long have you and Ino been together? Naruto still doing push-up said somewhere between a day and a lifetime, depending on how you look at it. Sakura said, you don't make any sense. Anyways what are you doing up on the ceiling anyways? Naruto said well, this is a standard Jenning chakra control exercise called tree climbing, but instead of doing it with just the feet I try and do it to the whole body. Better for you. Sakura said so how do you do it? Naruto smirked and said well it's simple actually. Anyone who passes the genin test can go to the library or ask any ninja how. All you have to do is channel chakra to your feet and start climbing. Too much and you blow off, too little and you fall off. But before you try it Sakura answer me a question. Sakura said okay sure. Naruto flipped in midair and landed on his feet on the ground below before walking to Sakura and saying. You know that you have almost perfect chakra control right? Sakura nodded and Naruto said do you know why you do? Sakura thought for a moment and said actually I don't. Do you? Naruto said yeah, I learned this when I was taught this, so don't be mad at me okay. Almost all female ninja have great chakra control because they have smaller reserves than male ninja thats, why most females are gain jutsu or medic type ninja. Male ninja have more chakra but less control and have to work harder thats why they are more ninjutsu type ninja. Do not think I am saying women are weak or anything. Let's take Tsunade for example. She is a famous medic nin, but she also is the strongest person in the world because she worked on her weakness of low chakra and made it big enough to use in battle or save lives. Sakura though about what he said and asked so you're saying that I have to work on my weakness of low chakra. How do I do that? Bakashi appeared at the door and said actually, Blondie was showing you how to do it. Every time you work on chakra control exercises like tree climbing your reserves get a little bigger. The more you work the more you have and the harder you control gets, so you have to work even more to keep it at the level you're at. But you can figure that out later. Team 7, meet me on the roof, and with that he left. A few minutes later Team 7 was sitting in front of Kakashi, and he said okay how about introductions, likes dislikes, dreams for the future. Sakura said why don't you go first to show us how it's done. Kakashi sighed and said my name is Kakashi, my dislikes are none of your business. My likes are not for children, and my dream is to meet Rin Agent and have my favorite book collection signed by the author. Naruto smacked his hand against his head. Bakashi looked amused and said okay head trauma, you first. Naruto sighed and said my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and he mouthed Kazama, my likes are my friends, Ino, Raymond, and certain grandfatherly books. 
looks at Kakashi, my dislikes are traitors, thieves, stuck-up snobs who think they are better because they were born from clans. My dreams for the future is making the leaf a better place, removing all curse seals like the cage bird and heaven earth seals, protecting the leaf with my life, and someday starting a family or maybe finding mine if they are still alive. Also I might help assertion pervert meet his 15 year old daughter. Looking at Kakashi. Kakashi was thinking is he talking about me? Do I have a daughter, I will find out. Okay Pinky, you next. Sakura said my name is Sakura, I like looks at Sasuke my dislike are, actually I don't know now. My dreams of the future are looks at Sasuke and squeals. Dot. Kakashi said okay stop right fire. Sakura, why do you want to be a ninja? Sakura looked at him and said I want to do it so I can show I am perfect for someone. Looks at Sasuke. Bakashi sighed and said I am going to tell you what my sensei told my female teammate. Grow up and quit thinking about some boy you want to impress. If you want to be a ninja, be a ninja, if you want to be a fangirl, hand me your headband now and go home now. Sakura said but. Bakashi said no buts. Listen, if you are so preoccupied with being a fangirl you won't be able to help save your teammate's life. Take care of this problem now or I will remove you from Team 7. Now Mr. Brady, your turn. Sasuke smirked and said my name is Sasuke Cha. I don't have any likes or dislikes. I don't have a dream, just an ambition to kill someone and restore my clan. Bakashi sighed and said same goes for you Mr. Brady. I know you want to kill your brother, but to do it you are going to have to work on it. If you think you are going to get special treatment then you are wrong. I will treat you the same as Naruto or Sakura if you all pass my test tomorrow. Meet me at the Memorial Stone tomorrow at 5 a.m. and Dante Tor you will puke. Naruto. The Hokage wants to see you again about itching powder in the avenue uniforms. Naruto sighed and said when I find this prankster I will show him who the king of pranks is. And with that both Kakashi and Naruto disappeared. Sakura started to chase after Sasuke, but stopped when she remembered what Kakashi said. What did I really become a ninja for? And with that she walked home. Sasuke left to try and learn tree climbing. He was not going to let the dope outdo him. When Kakashi and Naruto arrived Ino, her mom, Inoichi, Asuma, Kurinai and the third was already fire. The third said Kakashi, I swear, you are going to be late for your own funeral. Anyways the reason I brought you back here is because I need more info on what you said earlier and some proof. I want Inoichi here to enter one of your minds and let us see what you claim. Do you agree? Naruto sighed and said fine, I agree, but I request Ino goes in with him since she been fire before and knows her way around. My mind is like a maze and is easy to get lost in. Inoichi said Ino, I don't understand what's going on, but we are going to talk after this about entering people's minds. Naruto said Inoichi sir, I think you should wait until you see what the Hokage and I am referring to before you jump to conclusion. I guess I am as ready as I can be. As he sat down in a chair. Ino and her dad both sat across from him before doing the jutsu and reappeared in front of the empty cage of QB Inoichi started looking around and Naruto appeared in his tailed form. Naruto said oh, I see you already made it. Well this is where QP once lived. Inoichi looked at Naruto and said what do you mean once lived and what are you doing here? It should be impossible for you to be here when we do this jutsu and what is with the tails. Naruto said anytime anyone enters my mind I am automatically pulled in as a safety device to protect the seal when QP was here. As for where he is now. The QB that attacked our village is dead now. As for the tails. It was sort of the price me and Ino had to do what we did. Ino sighed as she changed into her two-tailed form and said this way dad. I guess the best place to start would be the sand sound war. Don't you agree Naruto? Inoichi saw his daughter change and said what are you talking about sand sound war? There is not even a sound village as far as I am aware of an Ino, why do you have tails now? Ino said in order for this to happen we both had to replace the demons that died. Naruto became the new QB and I became the new Nibi. I am still me, but it was the price to save our homes, friends and family. Ino led the group down into the maze of Naruto's mind until they came to his memories. They showed him about Orochimaru, Sasuke and the Shukaku. Inoichi said how is this possible? Naruto said it possible because Ino and I both came back from about 13 years in the future to try and change the past for us. Inoichi said how? Naruto said I guess I can either show the last few minutes before we came back or just explain it. Your choice. Inoichi said show me please. Naruto sighed and led them to his last set of memories. Naruto was standing in front of white door and a gold door was next to it. Naruto said this should be the door since it was a little good. Inoichi looked at the white door Naruto was pointing to and said do you mind if I look at that memory first? I have never seen a gold door before. Pointing to the gold door. Naruto said sure. Ino looked and turned pale and said Naruto, I don't think that's a good idea. I think I know what's behind that door and I don't want that known right now. 
Benoit said Eno, I don't know what you are hiding, but I am definitely looking now. And so he went and opened the door. Benoit saw. Eno released her jutsu, and they both came out of fire dazes. Naruto said so what do you think? Eno said well, I think we should look at pros versus cons. We can go back in time and change stuff to save our village and friends. Naruto said I know I will be hated, but if you are around me or they find out the truth you might be. Eno said we can stop sound and Akatsuki. Naruto said Eno are you sure about this, I mean, I know we have been together for almost a year now, but, you remember what life was like back then. You were a fangirl and I was a loud idiot. Eno said Naruto, I am that I was a fangirl and treated everyone bad back then, hell I lost my best friend over it, but now that I got to know the real you and not the idiot who hid behind a mask I say I could live all my life happily by your side. Naruto gave her a hug a passionate kiss. After they broke apart Naruto said Eno, I know this is stupid, but I want to do this before the changes. Eno would you when we get old enough age and marry me. Eno squealed and tackled Naruto and said I would love to Naruto. As she kissed him and they rolled around on the ground for a few minutes. After they broke apart from kissing Naruto said I think we should go see the fox and say our goodbye. Inoich looked at the two kids bang him and said oh boy. I think I need a drink. I've seen enough let's go back. And with that they all left Naruto's mind. Inoich sighed as he looked at Naruto and Eno. The third said so, what did you see? Inoich said more than any father wanted two of his daughter, but if what I saw is a sample of what's to come, we need all the help we can get. Do they know about the changes? Naruto said yeah. They already know about our demon status. If you want to blame anyone blame me. I hope you won't hate Eno for it. She still is the same person. Inoich said I suppose I can live with it, but I do have one question. Are you both still planning on that last memory? As he reached for his Kunia holster. Naruto started sweating and yeah, if she will still have me that is. Eno stepped in front of her dad and said leave my fiancé alone dad. Inoich sighed and said, I don't even get to scare him to take care of my little girl. Damn it. Where is the fun of having a son-in-law if you can't scare the hell out of him? The third chuckled and said so I take it the Kazama clan will be returning to the leaf sooner than I though huh? Inoich looked at the third and said Kazama clan. I thought Arashi was the no, you don't mean to tell me. Naruto stood up and said let me properly introduce myself sir. Naruto Uzumaki Kazama. Son of Arashi and Shizune Kazama. Grandson of Tsunade and Jureya of the Legendary Three. Inoich looked at Naruto and said as he looked to the third is he messing with me? The third sighed and said no, he is telling the truth about everything. But the ones from now don't know Naruto is related to them because I told them after the sealing that Irashi's son died to protect him from his father's enemies. By the time word spread about the sealing I could not risk telling the truth of his lineage. Inoich laughed and said you know Tsunade and Shizune will probably kill you right. Ino's mom said I don't think bad about Naruto, but does Ino know about that? Ino said mom. I guess I better go ahead and show you so don't freak out. Naruto, would you do it too? Naruto nodded and both transformed again into fire-tailed forms. Ino mom gasped and said Ino dear, what happened? Ino said the only way for us to come back in time like we did was for us to replace QP and Nibi. Ino's mom said I know who QP is but who is Nibi? Ino said Nibi is the two-tailed cat demon. I am the new Nibi. Naruto became the new QP and the old ones are in the afterlife forever. Inoich said so exactly what does it mean for you both now? Naruto said basically we can't die from old age. Our bodies are stronger, have more chakra, better senses, and I become the king over all demons, and Got became the summon boss for the foxes. Eno became the boss of the cats. The third said so let me get this straight. You both are the boss summons and can be called by anyone who signs correct. Naruto said that is what was explained to us. The third thought for a moment and said this is a very interesting turn of events. Have you already talked to your summons about it? Naruto said, not yet. We only arrived today because it was the easiest spot to start from. Especially with the snake bastard spies here in the village. The third nodded and said. I would like to request that you keep the summoning a secret with anyone except those you trust with the truth. Naruto nodded and said I request that no one mentions about Ino period, because with that group coming after me, I don't want them to actually get fire hands on her instead of Sibi. Inoich said what are you talking about now, if you don't mind me asking. Naruto said 9s class criminals that want to rule the world and wind up destroying most of it by using the power of demons they are capturing. It's common knowledge I had QB. It's not known about Ino. Bakashi let a perverted giggle and said so when's the wedding? Naruto said we will have to set a date later. God I will be glad when Rin and Brianna get her. Ino snickered and said me too. Poor copycat Kakashi can't be late or read his books or else his daughter uses the 1000 years of death on him with a kunia. Bakashi quickly put his book away and said spill it. Where are they and why have I not met my daughter? 
Naruto sighed and said all I can tell you is that they will meet you when we start a new village called Seedling in Wave Country a few years from now. As for why you don't meet them. Rin has a disease right now that has weakened her and your daughter can't leave her side. Sakura will cure her later in life. As for not sending you a letter or asking for help. She is just a damn proud to let you see her like she is now. Sorry. Speaking of Wave. A mission with a client named Tizana is coming up. I request that mission sir. It's a C-ranked turn A, I might be able to get us two good ninja, if you would grant them a pardon. The third said really. Who might these ninja be and how good are they? Naruto said Mamachi Zabaza and his apprentice Haku. Haku has a bloodline to control ice and is skilled in the use of acupuncture and medicine, and Zabaza was set up sir for his crime agent's mist. Kasami killed the Mizukagi son, so the Mizukagi ordered the death of all seven of the mist swordsmen. Zabaza attacked the Mizukagi after he ordered fire deaths. The third thought for a moment and said, if you can get them I will grant it, as long as they do not permanently hurt or kill any of our ninjas. Naruto smiled and said thanks old man. The third sighed and said it's getting late and I need to rest and think. Dismissed. Ino walked over and kissed Naruto and whispered I love you. Naruto smiled and whispered I love you also. Everyone started to leave and Inoich walked over to Naruto and said, if you hurt her I will kill you. Ino die eyed. The next day Naruto got to his team training ground at 5 am like Kakashi said, but he did eat this time. When he got thire he noticed Sakura sitting there, but she had dark rings under her eyes like she was up all night. Naruto walked over and said hi. Sakura looked up at him and sat in peace for a few minutes. Finally Sakura said Naruto why did you want to become a ninja in the first place? Naruto sat there for a moment and said I have not had the best of lives here because I have not known my parents like most people and had to learn by myself what life is really like. I have seen the best of the world and the worst. I wanted to be a ninja so that others won't have to live through what I did. My dream is to protect what is truly precious. Tell me Sakura. Do you know what it is to be truly strong? Sakura said you mean to be able to break boulders, trees and stuff like that with fire hands then yes. Why? Naruto sighed and said no Sakura, that's not what I meant. In every other country but ours they believe ninjas are nothing but tools. Here we have a different outlook in that point. We believe that ninja are as important as anyone else, and they are precious to each of us. Someone once summed it up to me as a simple sentence that I have taken to heart, you can only become truly strong when you are protecting what is most precious to you. When you are doing that you will find a way to do what must be done, so that even if you die those that you left behind will be able to continue on for you, because even if you are alone on a battlefield your precious person or place is still there. Those here today and the ones from tomorrow. Sakura looked at Naruto like he had a second head and was awed by his speech. She sat there quietly for a few minutes and said I think you have just helped me solve what I want to be a ninja for, thank you. Naruto said I hope so and I hope you always remember that saying because someday you may have to put the needs of those of the village before the needs of yourself. Remember that we are a team now, no matter what happens elsewhere, but we are also ninja of the hidden leaf and we must work together to ensure our village has a future. Sakura said so when did you become so wise? Naruto said I have always been wise, it's book smarts I have been stupid with. You cannot really judge a ninja by book knowledge, because if your enemy has read the same thing as you, then they will know how to defeat you. You remember my prank on the monument. Sakura shook her head, and Naruto said I did that for training. Sakura asked training. Naruto said how hard do you think it is to get by security, paint something in clear view, then escape and lead four Abnu and eight Chunin around the village for three hours in a wild chase. Sakura thought for a moment and said I still don't see how that is training. Naruto said that's what I was talking about earlier. You are the biggest book smart of our class, but I am not picking on you. What I mean is training is stealth, speed, stamina, chakra control, infiltration and trap skills. I worked on stamina, speed and chakra control out running the people chasing me and stealth, trap skills, and infiltration with my actual pranks. Sakura thought for a minute and said I can actually see that working. Why are you telling me this? Naruto thought for a moment and said, we are teammates now and we have to work together and support each other. I am strong, you are smart, and Sasuke is a combo of both, but no one of us can hope to defeat a stronger person if we don't work together and support each other. Also, I think that you and Ino should try and work out your friendship. Sasuke showed up and looked like he had no sleep and sat down agents to log. Naruto decided to try his chakra control, so he got up and said Sakura, Sasuke, you both look like you are dead tired, so why don't you both get some sleep, I am going to work on my chakra control for a little bit on the stream over there and will wake you when Kakashi gets here. I doubt he will be here for a couple of hours if yesterday was any indication. Sakura smiled and mouthed thank you and laid agents to tree and tried to sleep. Sasuke just pet and smirk as he leaned against a tree. 
Naruto walked over to the stream and started gathering chakra to his feet before he took a step out onto the water and slowly got the control right. He was thinking this new body is great. My control has gone up a lot and I feel stronger, but I don't know how much stronger. I suppose I can find out later, let's see if how long I can keep this up. Sasuke saw Naruto walking on water and became enraged agent that the dope did something else he could not. He sat there and stared at Naruto walking on water. Suddenly 10 more Narutos appeared and also started walking on water and 10 more started tree climbing. Three hours later Kakashi showed up and found Sakura sleeping, Sasuke looking ready to kill with a twitch in his eyebrows, and 21 Narutos were working on water walking or tree climbing. Kakashi smirked beneath his mask and said ok Naruto, cancel the clones and come over here, Sakura wake up. Sakura woke up as Naruto walked back and Naruto asked feel better. Sakura just nodded and said Sakura, before we begin. Why do you want to be a ninja? Sakura thought for a moment and said to protect that which is precious. Naruto helped me open my eyes to that this morning, and I understand it no. Bakashi smiled as he looked at Naruto and said ok team. This is your test. I have two bells. You have until noon to get them from me. The one who does not will be sent back to the academy. Come at me with intent to kill. Begin. All three disappeared. Suddenly Naruto appeared and smirked as he ran at Kakashi. Kakashi sighed and ducked under a kick and said, you should never let an enemy get behind you. One thousand years of death. As he stuck his finger in Naruto's butt. Just as he did that the Naruto in front of him exploded and blasted him into the air. The real Naruto appeared above him and said bunch and Ibakuha Yuzumaki combo as he kicked Kakashi back toward the ground. Kakashi replaced himself with a log as he hit the ground. Naruto disappeared agent after he landed and hid in the trees. Sakura ran up to Naruto and said Naruto stop. I figured out the test. Remember what you said this morning. We are a team. That is the test. Teamwork. Let's find Sasuke. Naruto smiled inwardly as he followed Sakura to where they could hear fighting. When they found Sasuke Kakashi was standing over him and his head was above ground. Sakura said Naruto, you distract Kakashi while I get Sasuke. Okay. Naruto nodded and created 25 clones, and they all changed into Gia with copies of Icha Icha Paradise and Thire Hands, and started screaming Kakashi my eternal rival. I have unlocked the way to pass the springtime of youth across the world. Join me as we will spread the passion of youth to the world. Kakashi seeing 26 Gias charging at him took off running. One of the Gia clones stopped chashing him and ran back to Sakura and Sasuke and released the hinge. Sakura said please tell me those eyebrows were exaggerated. Naruto said, you wish, I seen them yesterday, and Kakashi did everything he could to run from him. Sakura said at least we don't have to worry about someone like that our age. Naruto said actually Sakura, he had a mini him with him yesterday. Sakura thought for a moment before screaming and fainting. Bakashi reappeared wearing a green spandex suit like Chia and said Naruto, you are a dead man. And charged at Naruto. Naruto side stepped and tripped Kakashi. Sasuke took the distraction and tried to get the bells only to miss and got his belt instead. With Kakashi falling and his belt stopping Kakashi lost his pants and had Icha Icha Paradise boxers on. Sakura woke up and saw Kakashi and screamed pervert before inner Sakura took over and started beating the hell out of Kakashi. Naruto leaned over and grabbed the bells and handed one to Sasuke and said Sakura here. As he handed her the belt. Naruto then reached into Kakashi Kuniya Holzer and pulled out his Icha Icha Paradise Volume 14 and said come on let's go back to the training logs while we wait on him to wake up. Sasuke and Sakura followed Naruto who was reading the book as they went back to where they started. Sakura said Naruto, how can you stand to read that stuff? Naruto looked at her and said Sakura, I admit I am a little perverted, but I only think about one woman who I hope I can live the rest of my life with. I am sure you just don't want to admit you have the entire collection at home. Sakura looked away red-faced and said I don't know what you are talking about. Naruto said still reading so if by some chance I could get a hand on a signed copy of all the books from the author, you would not want it. Sakura started twitching and said I do not have to dignify an answer to that. Naruto said that's a good scene, but Icha Icha Paradise Volume 16 is better. Sakura said there is no Volume 16. Naruto said not in press yet, but I have already read the unedited version of it. Bakashi appeared and said is it as good as number 9. Naruto said 9 was good, but Slug Goddess beat the hell out of him, so he had to edit that one. 16 is better because he got the Wind Mistress and the Red-Eyed Warrior going into a threesome with the hero of the story. Bakashi sighed and said well you all passed because you all had teamwork. Remember this though. Those who follow the rules are trash. Those that leave Thire friends behind are worse than trash. Can I have my book back now Naruto? Naruto said yeah, here you go. If I can I will get you and Sakura both a signed copy for your collections if I see him. As he hands Kakashi his book. 
Bakashi giggled like a schoolgirl before he left in a puff of smoke. Sakura turned her back to Sasuke and said Mao thank you as she turned back to Sasuke and said Sasuke, can I walk home with you? Sasuke walked away and said no. Naruto saw Sakura get sad and said hey Sakura, if you want you can come with me to find Ino. Sakura smiled and said thanks Naruto, but I am tired so I will go home for now. I will think about what you said earlier. And she left. Naruto started to leave, but his senses caught the smell he was becoming to like as he saw Ino heading toward him from town. Naruto ran to her and hugged her and gave a kiss and said, did you pass Ajin? Ino said same as last time. Shika used his shadow to stop him. Choji became a distraction and I took over his body and got his sigs. Yours the same. Naruto said actually no. We passed but this time I gave Sakura enough clues to figure it out and I even helped her start seeing what it really means to be a ninja. I think she might come see you soon to try being friends Ajin. Ino smiled and said that would be good. So have you been getting any of his memories? Naruto said I have gotten a few but not many. Most of them come when I am trying to figure something basic out. I don't think he had very much in knowledge of Jutsu. He does have a few since I can tell he transformed into a human before, but I don't know much. What I can tell is he was mostly raw power. What about you? Ino said basically the same, but that's fine. We don't have to worry about not being us. You hungry? I got a sudden craving for seafood. Naruto smiled and said I know one thing you are probably going to love. I found all demons love Raymon. Remember Gara and me. Ino said how can I forget. 110 bowls between the two of you and Gara, stuck heish with a bill. As she started to laugh as they walked toward Ichiraku. As they walked they saw people giving Naruto the looks and a few sent toward Ino. Naruto sighed and said hate news always spread the fastest. Ino grabbed his hand and said just anger them. They can't do anything about it no. So when do you think people will learn your real name? Naruto said I don't know. Probably after I go get mom and my grandparents. Ino said so how you going to tell them about you? Naruto said I will cross that bridge when I get to it. They continued in silence for a few minutes until they got to Ichiraku. When they sat down AM said oh, Naruto it's good to see you again and who is this, your girlfriend? Naruto said it's good to see you Agent AM. This is. Ino said since Naruto trusted you and your dad can you both come here? Naruto shot her a questioning look and she squeezed his hand. AM nodded but was curious and went and got her dad. Nobody else was there because they left when Naruto arrived. A few moments later Ichiraku came and said so what is it you needed to see me about? Ino said, your daughter wanted to know if I was Naruto's girlfriend and since you both know about his situation and respected him, I wanted to show my respect to you. This is a secret to only a select few, but he is my fiancé. As she showed her hand and they saw the ring tattoo on her finger and saw Naruto had a matching one. AM had hearts in her eyes, and Ichiraku smiled and said the Raymon gods have smiled on you boy. So what would you like? I would refer to you as a couple until it becomes public knowledge okay. First bowl is on the house. Naruto smiled and said 10 maizo for me. Ino said I will take one seafood with extra meat please. AM said no problem as her dad returned to cooking. A few minutes later Thayer order was done and they started to eat. Ino said Naruto, I hate to admit it, but you were right about Raymon. Naruto smiled and said, it calms the savage beast. Ino punched him in the arm and said I am not savage. I am refined. Naruto chuckled and said I agree. As he finished eating. After they ate they went back to team 7 training ground and Naruto said well I think we should start seeing how good these bodies are. Ino nodded and she started practicing her katas from her fighting style she picked up when she was older. Naruto started off with trying to form her a Sengen. He was able to make it no problem. He then put his hands in a seal and said Taju Kage bunch and no jutsu and 1000 clones appeared. Ino stopped and said Naruto, can you teach me that? Naruto said sure just let me get them started. Okay I want half of you to do tree climbing and the other half water walking. Go until I dispel you or you run out of chakra. All the clones started practicing and Naruto turned to Ino and said, the only seal is put your hands like this and focus your chakra into it. The more chakra the more clones. I will tell you now. Anything a clone does you learn when it is dispelled, so you could read an entire library in one day, if you could make as many as I can. But when you release them do them in small bunches. The many and you get a headache or pass out from all the knowledge, but it helps greatly with chakra control. Ino tried it, and the first clone looked sick. Naruto said a lot more chakra. Put as much as you can into it. Ino closed her eyes and concentrated before doing the seals agent, and when she opened her eyes 200 clones were there. Naruto smiled and said well done. If you want to make more and get stronger have them do what mine is doing. Ino nodded and told her clones what to do. Naruto said after I get paid I am going to buy some weights to help my stamina and speed. You want some? 
Ino thought for a moment and said yeah I think I will, but won't it cost more than you have to buy that many weights as you used to carry. Naruto said I am going to buy some quick release weights, and since Hiro san and taught me sealing I can put chakra seals on them. Ino smiled and said boy by the time we get done we will be unstoppable. Naruto smiled and said yeah, I can't wait. Anyways let's go and practice sparring for now, and we will dispel our clones after we are done. Naruto got into the hummingbird style like he learned was his dad's style. Ino got into the tiger style which he was remembering from Nibis memories. Naruto said I don't recognize that style. Ino thought for a moment and said I remember it from Nibis memories. It's called tiger style. My body naturally got into it for some reason. Naruto thought for a moment and switched his style and said I can recall this style also. It's called fox style. Let's try it out. Ino nodded and together they charged at each other. It has been three weeks since they had become genins. Kakashi surprisingly had decided to teach them a little more. He had made them all earn tree climbing where they could do it for an hour without stopping, and had even taught them a little taijutsu. Ninjutsu he had not taught anything but he said he would. He was still three hours late. So far Team 7 had done 26 D rank mission. Kakashi has also been getting to know Naruto stopping by and dropping a fruit and also helping Naruto with his shopping problems twice a week. Naruto would give him money and a list, and Kakashi would deliver it himself for Naruto, since he can't get it himself. Surprisingly it was not mostly ramen. He actually got vegetable, some meat and fish, bread and a few other items. Kakashi offered to teach Naruto Chidori, but Naruto said that Jutsu is a headache and I am a wind user with a little earth and water. Lightning Jutsu are my major weakness. Fire is good when I use wind to add to it. Ino and Sakura had both became friends agent, but Ino kept hers and Naruto secret and just said they were dating. The third laughed after Team 10 had to bring Tora in the first time. The cat actually bowed to Ino. Ino and Naruto met every other day after team practice for two hours. Her parents still made her work at her family flower shop. People tried to say they would quit doing business with them if Ino did not break up, but after getting a surprise visit from Avnu or having a bunch of cats dredging dead birds and fish to people's homes they stopped. That and they were the only flower shop in town so they could not go elsewhere. It also helped the Ino Shiko Cho family made stated they were not going to tolerate Naruto being abused anymore and would defend him or any friend's family he might have in the future. The castle back off of trying to get Naruto in trouble with three major clans backing him now. Naruto and Ino both had chakra weights on and Naruto was close to 1000 pounds while Ino was close to 400 pounds. Naruto also picked up a some blank scrolls and a standard Abnu Katana he was trying to learn Kenjutsu. Fire teams for the most part just left them alone when they were training. Sasuke would often hide in trees watching them trying to learn where they were getting their strength from. However he mysteriously keeps getting attacked by stray cats and a few foxes that always come out whenever Ino and Naruto were training. His biggest enemy was Tora, the Fire Lord's cat which he can't kill, because a $10,000 bounty was put on the head of anyone who harmed the cat. Naruto and Ino both summoned one of Fire Lower summons and explained to them how they were summoned. Both cats and foxes bowed to Fire respective new bosses. Team 7 was standing in front of the Hokage after returning Tora to her owner. Sasuke was shooting the cat Deathglers and his hand was twitching as he was trying not to pull out a Kunia for it keeps scratching and attacking him. The third said Team 7, your next mission is a C-rank mission. Iruka who was standing next to him said sorry to interrupt Hokage-sama, but do you think it is wise to send them out on a C-rank already? I don't know if they are ready. The third said Iruka. I understand your concern, but I feel Team 7 is ready for this. Iruka nodded and stayed silent. The third said send him in. And a drunk old man walked in. The man looked at Team 7 and said this is what I paid for, a dark haired boy with a nervous twitch, a pink haired girl who looks like a strong wind would blow her over, and a boy with a sword who looks like he can't even hold it. I am the master bridge builder Tizana and I need bodyguards to protect me until I finish my bridge. Naruto said we are ninjas sir, we are master of deception and we are more skilled than we appeared. You can relax. Our team will make sure to do our duty and make sure you can finish your bridge. Also our sensei will be along to help protect you. The Zana sighed and said very well, I don't have a choice anyways. Meet me in two hours at the west gates. And he left the office. The third looked at Naruto and said Naruto, that was nicely handled, but remember to look out for your teammates. Naruto said don't worry old man. Everything will work out. The third nodded and Kakashi followed his team out after catching the look from the Hokage that said keep them safe. Naruto quickly grabbed his scrolls he had prepacked with camping and non-perishable food supplies, as well as one scroll of extra weapons. He smiled when he thought man am I glad Hiro-san and taught me how to do sealing. Naruto quickly wrote a note and locked his place up. 
He did not have to worry about intruders much now since he put seals on all his windows and doors. Only people Naruto trusted could get in. Hiruka was told Kakashi, and the Hokage did it for Naruto. Naruto quickly ran to the Yamanko flower shop and entered. He knows mom Sarah was at the counter. Nobody was at the shop since it was already afternoon. Naruto walked up and said hi Mrs. Yamanko. Is Eno home yet? Sarah said no not yet Naruto, can I help you with anything? Naruto said yeah, I got an out of town mission starting shortly and I would like you to give this letter to Eno for me. Sarah nodded and said sure. Be safer Eno will kill you. Bye. Naruto waved bye as he left the shop and went to meet his team and the client. When Naruto arrived at the west gate Sakura and Sasuke were there already, but the client and Kakashi had not arrived. Sasuke saw Naruto did not have a pack like him and Sakura and decided to make fun of him. Sasuke said hey dope, where's your stuff or are you too stupid to being anything? Sakura who had her best friend age and and was getting to actually know Naruto a little better. Sakura could not believe Sasuke was being such an ass, but Naruto said Sasuke, I don't have to carry a big pack to carry all my stuff. I use summon scrolls to carry everything I need. Sasuke said you're right. You don't know anything idiot. Quit trying to make yourself look good. Naruto sighed and said Sakura, how would you like to have all of your stuff in the summon scroll so you don't have to carry that heavy pack? Sakura smiled and said sure, I would love to. Naruto pulled out a blank scroll from his pouch and quickly made a few seals on it and said okay Sakura, put your backpack on the scroll and channel chakra into the seal on it. Sakura did and her pack disappeared. Naruto then said Sakura, I need you to cut your finger just enough to bleed a little so that you are the only person who can open your scroll. When you get blood just drop it on the seal. First blood on the seal is the only person who can use the seal. Got it. Sakura did what Naruto said and after that he handed it to her and said, just wipe a little blood on the seal and channel chakra into it and it will unseal. Oh look, here's Kakashi and the client. Kakashi walked up and noticed two of his students seem happy and ready and the other one had that nervous twitch agent in his eyebrows. Kakashi sighed as they started to leave the leaf village. An Abnu appeared with a tiger mask. The Abnu walked to Kakashi and said as he handed Kakashi a scroll proof for the proposal if you meet them. He said you would know who. And then left is a swirl of leaves. Team 7 continued fire mission. Ino had just returned home, which is above her family flower shop, from her team training. Ino walked in and said mom, dad, I'm home. Do you need anything before I go see Naruto? Sarah said Ino dear. I am sorry, but Naruto had out of town mission and said to give you this note. As she handed it to Ino. Ino chan. Sorry for missing you, but I had the wave mission I told you about come up. I wanted to tell you personally, but I did not know where to find you. I love you and can't wait to see you again. Take care of yourself my little kitten. See you soon. Yours. Ino blushed as she read it. She could not be more happy to have such a great person in her life. Ino quickly put the letter away later and safekeeping. Ino sighed and said mom, you need any help around the shop today. Sarah said yeah, your father and I would like to go out and eat alone tonight if that's okay with you. Ino said yeah, you can't live forever now can you? Sarah said don't talk to your mother like that young lady. I can still bend you over my knees. Ino laughed and said yeah, but are you sure your arthritis won't act up? Inoich was laughing at the little bikering and said now, now ladies, I don't want a cat fight in here, so retract your claws or I might give you a flea bath and someone might have a heart attack in her old age also. Ino looked at her mom as Sarah started to crack her knuckles. Sarah said Ino has been kind enough to teach me a special moves for male jerks. Inoich started backing up and Ino appeared in front of him. He then heard never let an angry woman who you insulted get behind you dear. One million years of broomstick. As a broomstick was shove up his butt. Inoich screamed as he flew out the door that a customer just opened to come in. He started running toward the hospital with a broomstick stick waving as he ran. The customer who was a retired female ninja in her 30s named Aya, who is a friend of the family and a repeat customer, said you know Tsunada created a version of that and started teaching it to all female ninja. Do they still teach that to young ladies? Ino said not that I know of. A friend of mine told me about it. I think it's a good jutsu to learn for husbands, perverts, and future husbands who look at other women or piss you off. The three women laughed about that. At Kanaha Hospital at that very moment. The doctor said now hold very still Mr. Yamanko. If you move you might get splinters from this broom handle and we will have to do surgery on your rectum. As the doctor started removing the broomstick in which sneezed. After that he was thinking this is the last time I joke about my wife's age or my daughter's being a cat demon. It's a real pain in the ass. On the road to wave country. The two demon brothers had just cut Kakashi replacement and Naruto was throwing a kunia to pin fire chains to a tree, but he sneezed and Mr. Hit how you look at it. Those who looked over at his brother Maizu and screamed, how can you do that to a man you monster? 
You made him a female. Naruto said it's not my fault I sneezed and caused my Kunia to miss. Those who ran to his brother and stabbed him in the head and said, this is all I can do for you brother. No man should suffer that fate. He then drew a Kunia and charged at Naruto who started to defend himself, and after 5 minutes grabbed Gozu and threw him at Sasuke, who was not expecting it, and caught Gozu on reflex, but not before receiving a knee to the family jewels for his trouble. Inner Sakura appeared and beat the hell out of Gozu. Tazana had one hand gording his manhood and the other on his sake bottle, thinking I would be better of with Gato. The Kashi who had hidden in a tree sneezed at almost the exact moment and fell out of his tree and landed on his head, knocking himself out, and his Itcha Itcha Make Out Tactics Volume 2 fell on the ground. Haku who was watching the fights after feeling sorry for Maizu, landed beside Kakashi and picked up his book before reading a few lines and flying backwards with a massive nosebleed. He awoke a few moments later and went back to hide. Somewhere in grass country a white hair man who was scribbling in a notebook while giggling sneezed and the screams of pervert was heard before he got beat down. After the woman left him the pervert thought Tsunade must be thinking about me Ajin. Somewhere between fire country a blonde haired woman had just hit 3-7 on a slot machine when she sneezed and the machine said tilt making her lose. Back with Eno. Sarah said for some reason I feel that justice has been served somehow. Eno said you just saying that because you and dad can't wait for the makeup make out. Sarah blushed as the Aya and Eno both laughed. Sarah deciding two can play that game said so when are you and Mr. Dreaming going to make me a grandma, huh? I at least want to be young enough to play with my grandchildren. Now it was Eno turn to blush before saying not until we are married. Aya said so, you and Whiskers are engaged now huh? In my day girls got rings but looks like you got tattoos. I noticed the other day Naruto had the same one on his same finger. Eno sighed and said yes, please keep it a secret for no. Aya squealed and said we have got to throw you a baccalaureate party soon. I will get you a copy of the best marital book on the market today. Itcha itcha lovers. The man who writes them is a pervert, but they are good books. Eno said I don't think I need it. Sarah said as a hush hush voice, we have got to get her a few things from torture and interrogation for woman magazine. Eno screamed moom. On the way to wave. Naruto was gording Tazana as Kakashi was fighting Zabaza when a scream of moom was heard and stopped the battle. Naruto said sounds like Eno. Sakura wanting to make a joke said she does have the lung capacity for it. Naruto muttered you not telling me anything new. Kakashi just sighed and said young love. Zabaza just shrugged his shoulders and they continued to fight. The two water dragons exploded and when the water cleared Kakashi blocked the strike of Zabaza's sword with a kunai. Naruto had already decided to let things go like they first happened to a point just stood gored and after using his high ten senses, he could tell when Haku got closer. Deciding the time was right Naruto said so Kakashi sensei. Did Zabaza pass the test like the Hokage said? Is he strong enough to become a leaf ninja? The Kashi who already knew the Hokage had authorized it, decided to play along and said yeah he has Naruto. To be on par with me he has to be good. Anyways the options his and his assistant we got the report on. Naruto said his assistant is here also. I can detect her. Maybe we should end this test now and let them have some time to think about joining with full immunity after the probation period. Naruto smiled and then frowned when he saw Sasuke saw Haku was a girl when they prepared her body for the funeral. Haku who was in the trees heard this and at first was struck how someone can detect her and knew she was a female. Zabaza said as Hei jumped away from Kakashi, what are you talking about Kakashi? Kakashi said, we were informed about you both before we took this mission because you had been spotted in the area. The Hokage decided after he received information that you were framed and could use a new start. Kanaha does not have many Kenjutsu teachers, and only about 10 of us that I am aware of now suit in Jutsu. Also we know about the bloodline your assistant has. Kanaha loves bloodlines so she would be welcomed and not treated like Miss does. Zabaza said nice trick do you have any proof? Bakashi pulled out a scroll and said here is the proposal from our Hokage. You know we will be in wave for a while and you have time to consider it. I know you have to be tired of being on the run from hunters. As he threw the scroll at Zabaza. Haku appeared and caught the scroll and opened it to start reading. After finishing Haku said it is as he says. Full amnesty if we join the leaf after a three month probation period. Zabaza who still was in a defense position said I will have to think about it. I will let you know my answer the next time we meet. It will either be with a handshake or the sharp end of my blade. And with that both Zabaza and Haku disappeared. Bakashi walked over to his group and caught something from Naruto. It was a pill. He looked at Naruto and Naruto said soldier pill, you are ready to collapse so cover that damn eye. Bakashi looked sheepish as he covered his Sharingan and took the pill. He said well team, fun's over let's continue our mission. Keep defense formation for now. Team 10 was standing in front of the Hokage and he said team 10, your next mission is a C rank mission. 
I want you to deliver this scroll to the Kazikage and Suna. You leave in an hour. Dismissed. Everyone in Team 10 but Eno started to leave, but Eno said, can I speak to you privately sir? Everyone looked at her, but the Hokage said sure, she will meet the rest of you at the gate, dismissed. After everyone was gone the third said what can I do for you Eno? Eno said I actually had two things I wanted to ask if possible sir. After he nodded to go ahead Eno said, the first is would it be possible to try and get Tsunade Sama and Jureya here before the Chunin exams? I know that's what we are delivering our travel papers for Suna's team. The third thought for a moment and said only if you tell me why. Eno sighed and said that's when the Snakebastard will start the Sand Sound War with us. He probably already killed the Kazikage now and is impersonating him. The third though for a moment and said what is the other request? Not answering her first question. Eno said the other request is personal, but not for me. Naruto told you how Shizune told him about his family. What he did not tell you is by that time Tsunade and Jureya had already died in battle, and she died moments later after her confession. He never got to really experience a family because of that. I know he is always thinking about others first, but I request if you can get them tell them the truth before the war. I know this might cause trouble for you, and I am sorry, but I just wanted to request it, because Naruto is too stubborn to ask for himself. I guess it runs in the family. The third sighed and said I will see what I can do. Do not mention anything until I tell you. Dismissed. Ino said thank you Hokage-sama. I hope everything works out and we all survive because I want you to be the one who performs our wedding when it comes time. The third chuckled and said I would be glad to. Naruto has always been like a grandchild to me, and nothing would make me happier. Ino left and the third sighed before starting to write out two long letters that would probably get him killed. Ino joined her team at the main gates, and Shikamaru said, what was that all about troublesome woman? Ino said I had a personal request for the Hokage for my family. Mostly a mission request to find some people. Asuma dropped his cigarette and said if it's who I think you are talking about things are going to get exiting. Ino smiled and said it's just three people I am exited to see Agent if he can find them. And she started purring from being so happy. Toji continued to eat his chips, and Shikamaru said Ino, you are too troublesome, but why have you started sound like you're purring every now and then? You have been doing that a lot since you and Naruto suddenly got so close. Ino smiled and said it's because I finally found someone who understands me like we have been together for a lifetime and understand each other on a whole other level. Shikamaru said troublesome. As they continued on fire way to Suna. Asuma decided to lighten the mood and said, you know every time I see Suna it reminds me of a letterbox. Ino hissed as she screamed CNCEE. Naruto who was sitting at the table at Tizana house, heard a scream of CNCEE and Sakura said Naruto, I have one question for you. How can you stand to be with Ino when she can scream so loud to be heard all the way here? Naruto said she only is like that when someone upsets her. To me she's my little kitten. Bakashi not missing a chance said so are you her big strong fox. Sasuke smirked and said he certainly has the look of one with those whiskers. Sakura looked at Naruto as he put his hands on his face. She then said so Naruto, would you mind telling me why you and Ino have matching tattoos on your ring finger? Naruto looked at his hand and smiled and said someday I will. Sakura said so how did you and Ino start, huh? Bakashi said I also have wondered that. Naruto thought for a moment. Flashback. The 19-year-old Sasuke had already absorbed Orochimaru's soul into his own and had lead a surprise attack on Kanaha. Him and Naruto had both summoned fire respecitive bosses to fight each other. It was a stalemate with neither getting the upper hand. Ino had made got close to fire battle and was locked in a fight with two sound ninja. Sasuke saw her and decided it was time to gain the upper hand agents Naruto. He suddenly used a Sinijashu, hidden shadow snake hand, and send a viper out of his sleeves at Ino, who still had her back to them. Naruto saw this and intercepted the snake right before it bit him. Sakura appeared beside Sasuke and punched him in the chest with her super strength and broke six of his ribs, and he went flying. Kabuto appeared and caught him before ordering the retreat as they both disappeared. Ino saw Naruto as he fell beside her with the snake still attached to his arm. Sakura ran over and started to treat him and removed the poison from him. Ino after he was healed huged him and said thanks for saving me. And then kissed him a quick kiss on the lips. Flashback end. Naruto smiled and said I saved her from a snake and got bit by it while outside the walls of our village. She kissed me for saving her life and we got closer after that. Sakura had hearts in her eyes and said how romantic. Sasuke said what a waste of time. If she could not save herself from a snake she deserved it. She should not leave the village if she could not take care of herself. There are no snakes in Kanaha to get bit by. Naruto said, not all snakes have fangs and thire are snakes in Kanaha. They just hide better. As he looked at Sasuke with narrowed eyes. 
The Kashi not wanting to start a fight said okay I want you all to get rest. Tomorrow we will begin water walking training since you all know the tree climbing. You can do it beside the bridge taking turns while we gourd the client. Naruto, since you already know it you will teach the others while I stand gourd. Theme 7 finished eating and went to bed. Time skipped 3 days later Suna. Theme 10 had made it to Suna and had already delivered fire scrolls. The Kazikage had set them up in a hotel for the night to rest before returning last night, Ino was currently walking through the village before they returned when she felt a spike of killer intent. She went to investigate and saw Baki who was standing in front of Gara, Tamari, Kankuro. The Baki left and Ino came out of hitting and walked toward the group and said sorry to interrupt, but I was wondering if you could tell me if you have any Raymond stands or a decent restaurant that might have seafood here. The sand team noticed Eno had a Kanaha headband and said no sorry we don't have Raymond or seafood because not enough people like Raymond and we are too far to get seafood before it goes bad. What is a Kanaha ninja doing here? Eno sighed and said my team and I was sent to deliver a scroll to the Kazikage. I think it's for the Chunin exams coming up soon. Bera said what is your name? With a look that said I will kill you. Eno said you will find out at the exams raccoon, oh before I forget I have a message for you. The fox can't wait to see you. The sand team was scared for a moment, and Tamari said wait. How do you know we are going to be in the exams and how do you know about Gera? Eno turned around and said simple, people talk about Gera condition all over because of his thirst for blood, second people in your village, already talking about peace from fire demon and third, the raccoon should learn who his new master is, besides. His new master might fix that weak seal if he behaves, and don't mention this to anyone or you can forget about getting him to shut up and getting some sleep. It would be nice to have you brother back without having to worry about killing you when around him. Ask for Naruto when you arrive. And she was engulfed in a yellow light before disappearing. Damari said what do you think? Tenkuro said I don't know. She knew all about us. It's not that big of a secret, but what was that about a fox? Bera said I don't know, but if this Naruto can do what she claims then I want it. If not I will kill him and her. If either of you mention this I will kill both of you. Come, Kazikage wants to see us. He said Kazikage with venom in his voice. Ino smiled and thought as she joined her team at the gates as they left, I hope you know what you are doing Naruto. It would be nice to get the good Gara who became Kazikage agent. Hopefully you won't have to nearly kill each other this time. Naruto was standing on top of the water by the bridge watching Sakura and Sasuke practice water walking. They both finally got the standing part, but Sakura falls after about 3 minutes, and Sasuke falls after about 10. Naruto said okay, you both have the standing part, but walking is still difficult. Let's call it a day and try agent tomorrow, since you both are almost out of chakra. Sasuke grew mad and said dope, tell me how you can already know this, and how come you have stood out here all day with us without leaving the water, and we both fall after a few minutes. Who is teaching you this and why you? Naruto thought for a moment and said the people who taught me how to do this died, and I won't tell you who they were out of respect. As for how I can stand out here is because I have done this a lot longer than either of you. As for why, I did something for them and they gave me some help. Their help is why I passed to become a genin. I can't make regular bunshins because I have too much chakra. That is why I can make kaga bunshin. Sasuke said yeah right dope. So exactly how did you graduate? We all saw you fail. Naruto said the truth is I was tricked into doing something by Mizuki. He then tried to kill me and Aruka, and I saved Aruka life by defeating and capturing the traitor. An almost forgotten law said if a person saves the life of a ninja or captures a traitor to the village he or she would become a ninja at the rank of fire skills. Sasuke said so you saved Aruka and captured Mizuki. I don't believe you. Naruto said believe what you want. My being here is proof enough as he walked up the bridge support with Sakura following him. Sasuke walked to the support beam and punched it and thought I will find out how you are really becoming strong and take it for myself dope. Before climbing up the beam himself. The next day when Team 7 arrived at the bridge all the workers were standing at the end of the bridge scared and Zabaza and Haku were standing in front of them. Kakashi said so what did you decide? Zabaza said I am going to accept your offer. At first I was going to decline, but when Gozu returned alone while I was fighting you, Gato killed him. I would have killed Gato then for killing my man, but he was too well protected then. I overheard him and he plans to kill me after I fight you today and sell Haku to the slave rings. I don't want that to happen. The price for me joining your village is you help me kill him. Bakashi shook his head and then shook hands with Zabaza. Tazana told his men to start work and stay behind the ninja when the fight starts. Naruto just remembered something and said shit, Kakashi, be back in a few. And then he disappeared as flames surrounded him. Zabaza whistled and said nice trick, think I could learn that. Bakashi said I just wonder if I could learn it. 
The Nari was running to save his mom, and the mercenary was swinging his sword down to kill Inari when a flash of flames appeared between the sword and Inari and Naruto already had his sword out blocking the strike. The Merc were so surprised that the fact of a perfect Rasengan hit him in the stomach and he was sent flying backwards, did not register before he hit the tree. Naruto swung his sword in an overhead slash, since it was still in a gourd position, and decapitated the other Merc. Naruto then checked the man who he hit with a Rasengan and found him dead. Naruto then turned to Inari and said good job saving your mom and distracting them for me. Remember to always protect what is precious. And then disappeared into flames agent. Team 7 were on the bridge preparing to fight 200 merc that Gato brought as they charged toward them when in the middle of the bridge, a burst of flames appeared between Team 7 and the mercs. Everyone stoked at that for a moment and Gato when he saw the headband for Kanaha and said kill him also. He is just a kid. The merc waited to see what happened before attacking. Naruto walked back to Team 7 and noticed all the workers were gone, so he figured they were sent away before Gato got there and said as he looked at the odds looks like we got 201 targets. One with the least kills buys dinner. Sakura gawked at Naruto and said Naruto, we're just genins. We have not killed yet. Naruto said where do you think I went? Two merc went after Tazana family before I killed them. We're ninja, we kill, but we are not merely tools. Anyways, any takers. Sasuke not wanted to be outdone agent said you're on dope. Bakashi sighed before smiling and said I'm in, Sakura gored the client. Either of you want some action. Zabaza said I'm in. Aku sighed before saying men and thy are egos. I'm in. I will show him I will be no one's slave. Naruto smirked and created two clones and said Kakashi, want to see the completed version the fourth never finished. Bakashi said you figured out how to do that. Naruto started forming a Rasengan and two clones started helping before changing the shape to look like a shuriken and said this is a Fdong. Rasen Shuriken. It took me a while to figure out how to do this without destroying my own body. Who's first? One merc said they talk big let's get he never finished as a Senban needle went in his heart killing him. Haku said that's one. And so the two group charged. Naruto flamed Shushine to the middle of the group and hit a merc and flamed Shushin back to Sakura as the Rasa Shuriken exploded and killed about 30 men for the blast and wind damage in the middle of the group. They were all cut to pieces by the wind element. Bakashi said that only counted as one. As he stabbed one merc in the heart while he blocked a sword from another with a kunia in his other hand. Sasuke had yet to actually kill anyone. He tried using Katen Phoenix fireball jutsu, but only hit one slow merc in the shoulder. Haku had already formed her demonic ice mirrors around a group of 15 and was cutting them two down with her sentence. Zabaza was mostly just decapitating anyone who got in the way of his headchopper blade. Naruto created 10 clones and charged into the fight each carrying copy of his sword. Beto could not believe what he was seeing. His men were being killed by these ninja. Deciding it was time to leave he quickly ran to the edge of the bridge and climbed to his ship below. Once he made it he drew his cane apart and cut the rope ladder with his sword that was inside his cane. He told the caption of the ship to leave now. The group of ninja had just finished killing the last of the mercs and saw Gato was gone. They looked around and heard a boat motor below the bridge start. They ran to the side of the bridge and saw the ship with Gato waving on it far below leaving. Kakashi said damn. As they saw his ship getting further away. Sasuke collapsed from chakra exhaustion for using too many jutsu. Naruto ran and jumped off the bridge while biting his thumb and going through some seal before shouting Kuchius no jutsu and suddenly a giant seven-tailed blue fox appeared under Naruto standing on top of the water and the fox said, what can I do for you Naruto-sama? Naruto pointed to Gato who was standing on his boat scared said Silga, I want you to put him in your ultimate game jutsu on him for me so he will suffer before he dies. I could have you just kill or eat him, but straight killing him is too good, and he is so vile I bet he would make you puke. The fox nodded that waved its tails, and then Gato started screaming and clawing at his own body, before stabbing himself with his own sword. The fox then took Naruto back to the bridge, and he jumped on it, and the fox said before I return master, the others are wondering when the marriage between yourself and Lady Eno will be between the two lands. Both us and the cats are all ready to join lands in our world. Naruto looked sheepish as everyone was looking at him and said, it will be soon Silga, for now just prepare the lands. We both will be coming after the marriage here for a ceremony in Makai for our people there. Also please put the slugs and toads on the special guest list. Silga nodded and said, very well lord, Gambunta has been trying to find you for some time anyways lord, and contacted our kind after hearing about the new lord. Remember time and our world is different than yours so we he knows you and said once you sign it, he will grant you permission. And with that he disappeared. Sakura said Naruto what was that all about and what is this about a marriage between Ino and you? How come he acted like you were his king or something and what do you mean going to Makai wherever that is? 
Naruto sighed and said Sakura, I will explain it all to you, since Kakashi already knows when we get home and talk to the Hokage in private. Do not mention anything about what happened here before then especially to Sasuke. You will find out why later. I am tired from summoning, Flame Shushin several times, Rasengan and Rasen Shuriken, as well as Kagabunshin. I am going back to the house and rest. I think we all could use it since Gato's dead and Wave Country is free. And with that he left. The bridge was finished a few days later, and Sasuke was still in the dark about what happened after he passed out. Sakura still wanted to know but would wait. Naruto had become good friends with Haku, and Kakashi got Zabaza hooked on Icha Icha Paradise. Sakura had also gotten friends with Haku. Sasuke became even more jealous since then and learned that Naruto had won the contest with 71 kills. Zabaza had 54, Kakashi had 53, and Haku had 20, and he only had 3. He had hurt more but not kill. The trip back was not eventful. When they got back Kakashi released Team 7 for the rest of the week to rest as he took Zabaza and Haku to the Hokage. Naruto started to go see Ino, but Sakura stopped him and said, I want to come with you so I can talk to Ino also. Naruto nodded and Sasuke went home to brood and think of killing his brother. When Naruto got to Ino's home she was at the cash register and saw Naruto followed by Sakura and said hey, how was your mission? Did things work out? Naruto said yeah they worked out and we saved Zabaza and Haku this time. Some stuff happened and Sakura knows too much not to tell her the truth. I told her she would have to wait till we talk to the old man since he wants to know who knows the truth. Ino looked sheepish and said I think he might be out of the hospital now. Naruto said what happened? Why is he in the hospital? Ino smiled and said I kind of requested something before I went to Suna and yes I gave Gera the message but when we got back he had already done what I requested. Naruto said scared Ino, what did you request? Ino said a lot happened. Your mom and grandparents are here and they already know the whole truth from me, including the new about us. Your mom and grandma beat the shit out of the Hokage and your grandpa proposed after he gave up restaining your grandma. Surprisingly she accepted after he agreed to pay all of her debts and cut back on his pervertiveness. Big news is the council had a field day after they found out about your ancestry. Danzo was executed for attempting to assassinate the Hokage in the hospital, and Root was disbanded. Heish surprisingly put you under the Hyuga protection, and you already had the three other clans backing you. Shino's family also put you under your protection, but that was after his dad discovered the truth about us from his bugs and asked the Hokage for information. He holds no judgment against us and said he would keep it a secret for only his clan to know and they would prepare accordingly. You have already gotten a damn fan club also because your old burden was made public knowledge. Also your stuff has been moved to your family homes and you have been given access to your inheritance, including your family name. Sakura said will someone please tell me what's going on. Ino said I suppose I will but let's go to the Hokage office. Some people are wanting to see Naruto. Mom I'm leaving. And the three left after Sarah came in to relieve Ino. A few minutes later and a lot less looks of hatred at Naruto, they made it to the Hokage office. The Avenue let them in after calling Naruto, Kazama-sama. When they got there Naruto smiled as he saw who was there. Shizune spit out her water she was drinking. Tsunade dropped the book in her hand and Jiria was looking with pride. Kakashi was still there along with the third. Naruto said hello mom, Tsunade Bachin, Iro Sanin. It's good to see you all. The vein appeared on Tsunade's head and she said I am not that old. Shizune slowly walked to Naruto gave him a hug and said I am so sorry, I was told you died. If I had known I would have been there for you. Please forgive me. Naruto hugged her back and for the first time in two lifetimes, finally knew the love of being held by a mother, and all of his emotional walls he built up gave way, and he cried tears of joy. The Hokage said after a few minutes of him finally stopped crying and being hugged by both of his grandparents, sorry for interrupting the moment, but I understand from Kakashi that Sakura knows too much and is needing some answers, so I will say this once. This is a S-class secret. Only a select few know the entire truth and for them to tell you means they trust you. Do not show that trust was bad Sakura. Understand. Sakura nodded and Ino said okay what do you know so far so I can fill in the blanks. Sakura said all I know is somehow Naruto summoned a fox that kept acting like Naruto was king and said you were getting married and something about a place called Makai. Ino nodded and said long story short. You know that QB was killed by Naruto dad the Yodium. Sakura looked at Naruto in awe and then Ino said that is a lie. The truth is he could not kill the demon. Instead he had to seal it into Naruto the day he was born. Yodium died doing it and the third changed Naruto name to keep him safe from his dad's enemies. He also told his family that Naruto died during the attack. Tsunade and Jiria has a love-hate relationship and they were Yodim parents in secret. Shizune over there is Naruto mom. Anyways back to now. 
Naruto and I are both from almost 13 years in the future. A lot of stuff happens and all of our friends and family died. Our home was destroyed. We were given a way to come back, but we would have to pay a price which we both did. Sakura said if you're from the future can you tell me about myself. Ino sighed and looked sad and said you apprentice under the Gondai Mei Hokage Tsunade and become the best medic under her. I also learned medical jutsu, but I was more of an interrogator. You won't like this, but you were killed by the traitor Sasuke. Sakura said why would Sasuke do that? Naruto said to try and master his bloodline. The Sharingan has a level past the third comma. Sasuke will do anything to get it. He betrays our village several times and probably will do it agent it we can't stop it. Sakura, you have to understand his brother screwed his head up so bad when he killed the rest of his family, there is no saving him. We tried everything. You offered him love, your virginity, you even offered to go with him and betray your home for him, and he just ignored you. The requirement to get that level of his bloodline is you have to kill your best friend who you must emotionally care for. He first tried to kill me, but the QP kept saving my life. He then tried making false friend in Sound Village and killing them, and it still would not work. He then thought that maybe it had to be someone who loved him and killed you when you were doing charity work at the hospital in Wave Country when we started a new village there called Seedling. Sasuke never emotionally cared for anyone, so he was never able to get the final level before I was forced to kill him to save your daughter. Sakura smiled and felt sad at the same time and said, can you tell me who was my daughter dad was? Vino snickered and said I could, but you won't believe me until you get older and learn what a sweat yet eccentric guy he can be. Especially after he changes. Sakura huffed and said so what was the price you both paid? Ino said I will tell you and show you, but I want you to know we are still your friends and still care for you and everyone else. Okay. Sakura nodded and Ino and Naruto shapeshift into Thyre true forms and Naruto said the price was QB gave his life and his lover's Nibi who was in another dimension fatally wounded. I became the new QB and the king of all demons and Ino became the new Nibi the two-tailed cat. We gave up our mortality because we will never grow. We can still die several different ways but never of old age. To save our home and precious people that was the price we paid. As for the marriage thing before we came back I proposed and she accepted. Seeing as we are both the head of the fox and cats our marriage will mean the people in Makai will join as one kingdom. As they both change back into Thyre normal appearance. Sakura smiled and said I understand why you did not want Sasuke to know about anything now and I will keep both of your secrets and I still think of you both the same. Tsunade said if that's true I have two question. The first is what will happen to any children you have, and my second question is any way to make us live forever. Naruto smiled and said well, the thing is I found this out. I may be the king of demons, but humans only call us demons because we are so strong and scary in our long lives. We are just lesser being under the supreme lord of all life, whatever you want to call him. Think of me as the Hokage and the other tailed demons are my council, and I am over a village. I can ask Supreme Lord for certain people to come to my village, and if he agree that is what I plan to do. I plan on asking for dad to be released from the Shinigami and request my family and friends to be sent to my land when you leave this world. I can't take you while you live here unfortunately. One thing I should tell you is that the people there look like normal people, but when summoned the summon changed thyre forms. That's how all the tailed beast came here first. Humans summoned them wrong and they could not go back, so they got pissed and attacked humans. Shizune said so that means I will get to see Arashi again and we can be a whole family. Naruto smiled and said I hope so, but I don't want any of you to go out and try to die because I want you here for as long as possible. As for children. We can't have children here. They will be full-blooded demons and still appear human, but they will gain attributes like Ino and I as they get older, so they will have to live in Makai. The third sighed and said what about if you had a human wife Naruto, no offense Ino, but I just need to know if he could have human children if he had a mortal wife. Ino said what do you mean? Are you saying I am not good enough for him or that I can't marry him? Shizune said I know what Hess talking about. Arashi was asked the same question. Being the last heir of the founder of the village Naruto falls into the clan resurrection act. The council could not pressure Arashi into it much since Tsunade was still young enough to have children and her brother was alive until she was 18, but Naruto is the last who could produce a child and possibly carry one of either bloodline. Ino stopped her ranting and said I understand, but I don't like it. What are his options because yes he can produce a normal child who will have hided senses and a lot of chakra. The third said since you are already getting married you will have two years together before the council can do anything. After that if you have not produced a child he will have one year to find at least three wives to produce an heir who have two years to conceive. Adoption is not an option either. If after that one year he does not find three wives, the council can arrange for him to marry someone of Thyre choosing. 
It will continue like that until he dies, unable to have children or an heir is born. It all starts the day he turns 14. Naruto walked over to Ino and held her and said no matter what Ino. I will always love you most and first. I don't like it either, but I guess this was what has to happen. Look at it this way. You will be my first, you may have to share me for the next 50 or so years, but after that we will have all of eternity to have the family we wanted. Ino laughed and said well at least you can get tips on how to please me forever this way. I think I get the better deal. You will have to put up multiple pumsing women. Everyone laughed while Jiraiya scribbled down on his notebook before being sent sailing through the window. Naruto got a look in his eye, and Ino said what? Naruto said I am tired of feeling knacked. I want to get it Ajin. As he looked at Tsunade. Everyone looked at him confused, and she realized what he meant and said, why am I not surprised? Naruto said you know what it means to me. Ino said yeah. I remember what you did to that tried to steal it. You stuck a Kunia with an exploding tag up his, but with a 5 second fuse. Tsunade said what are you both talking about and why are you looking at me like that Naruto? Naruto said I am not looking at you. I am looking at it around your neck. I won that curse necklace when he earned the Rasengan in one week and wore it until I was 25 and came back in time. I feel knacked without it. Oh are you still afraid of blood because if you are we need to get over that quick. Tsunade said you are my grandson, but you don't tell me what to do. I am still strong enough to bend you over my knee and spank you brat. Naruto laughed and said man it's good to have you back granny. Tsunade eyebrow which and Jiraiya walked back in and said as he handed a copy of Icha Icha Paradise Volume 15, this is to help you on your wedding night. Naruto looked at the title and said already read it. Tsunade said so you are a pervert. Naruto said a I am not a pervert in the general terms. I only read the stupid books for certain reasons. The first was I was apparentus under him for three years while hiding for my life and had to wind up writing two volumes just to get him to train me because we did not know until I was 21 that we were related when my mom died in my arms confessing the truth and how she only found out a few months. Before because of a surgery I had to have to save my life. Second I read it because of a lack of education I was a complete idiot when it came to anatomy. Sakura said what do you mean an idiot when it came to anatomy? You made that pervert buster jutsu sexy no jutsu, and everything looked right to me. Naruto said simple. If you ever removed the fog that covered certain areas there was no nipples, and the bottom was blank. I perfected it years later. And my third reason for reading that stupid book is I used scenes from those books to help me infiltrate a couple of slave rings for missions. As for personal use I rather have the touch of a real woman than my imagination. Especially when you had a 10,000 year old pervert in your body that got his jollies from making rude comments and sending perverted images of all of your female friends. That's one thing I am glad has gone about. And with that sentence you could feel the killer intent coming of both Sakura and Ino. Ino said you never mentioned that before Naruto. As she started rolling up her sleeve like Sakura was. Naruto said I never wanted those images, remember Ino I hate perverts and respect women. Sakura said so who was it the fox sent images to you of? Ino said yes, I want to know. Naruto said I will tell you the truth so you know the fox was sick and it was not me. Let's see, Hinata, Tamari, both of you, Brianna, Hana, Kurinai, Anko, Tenten, Princess Yuki Fujikas. Bakashi who had been quit said wait Naruto Shes dead. Naruto said no Shes not Shes the actress Princess Fuun, anyway who else? Oh yeah am, Tsunami, Haku and a few others I don't remember very well. Ino said okay I don't like it, but I know you are telling the truth. So, how close were the actual uses to the ones he sent? Naruto said well I would say by the time he was done editing them, you all had racks like granny. Tsunade said warningly what's that supposed to mean? Naruto said when I returned from the three year trip with the pervert over Thire, you suffocated me in a hug and had to use medical jutsu and QB to keep me alive. I could not break free because of that monster strength. Shizune said well, I would love to hear more, but we are in the Hokage office, and I would like to show Naruto his new home, you are both welcome to come. And so everyone left except the third who cried at all the paperwork. Naruto ran back in and said here's a tip so you can get out of this office and away from paperwork. Kagabunshin. And then left. The third thought for a moment and the smiled as he created five clones and got to work. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.